Hello everybody, Dr. Saich here again at Dermaskin Institute. Today, we're gonna to be talking about sunscreen, or more importantly, the dark side of the sunscreen. So just like we have the dark side of the moon, uh, just like with any medication, there are potential side effects and risks that can be associated, and sunscreen, like any other, has had a bunch of side effects reported both in the media, in the news, and in the scientific literature. And it's no wonder that sometimes our patients ask us, well, what's the deal on sunscreen, Dr. S? Do you still recommend it? Are there certain chemicals that we should be avoiding? So really looking at this, this can be a complex question. And right now, I think the overwhelming data suggests that by far, sunscreen is much more beneficial than it has side effects. So if we had to pick one side, I think sun, sun itself and the damaging UV rays causing skin cancer is a much, much bigger worry than all of the potential side effects that have been raised currently to date. Now, having said that, there are certain chemicals and elements that have a little bit of more um, things associated with it that may or may not be true. We're still as a scientific community trying to find out, and it's our role to really speak to you as our patients and let you have your own informed decision. So where does this all come from? Well, there's been two studies recently published in the US uh, and found that actually chemi certain chemicals in sunscreen were detected in blood levels at higher levels than were expected. So what this prompted was the FDA or the Federal Drug Administration in the US to ask more questions from the companies making these sunscreens to look into the more data. Now, before we ring any alarms, this same data has been known in the European Union for over 20 years. It's just that in America, they have not done these studies on American patients until now. So in Europe, if you look at all of the data, if you look at uh, how the European Commission has been looking at certain chemicals, whether it's sunscreen or other cosmetic beauty products like hydroquinone, for example, in general, they are much quicker than the American Federal Drug Administration to put a halt on medications that they feel are unsafe. So the fact that these medications have not been withdrawn in the European Union tells us that most likely they are okay and there's nothing really alarming about these particular chemicals. However, it is only human to know and to want to inquire and ask more. And I definitely think that there should be more studies before we can really fully close the case. So while we await, I think it is prudent to really consider which particular chemicals the FDA is calling into question. So generally those tend to be all on the chemical side of the story. So there are two ways that we can block the sun right now, and that is through chemical ways, okay, which filter out the sun, and through physical ways or mineral ways which block the sun. So the mineral sunscreens, there's really two of them, or maybe three if you uh, group them together. So there's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those are the most well-known ones. And they filter out the UV both on the wide spectrum, on the UVA and UVB. And then there's also a third one, uh, iron oxide, for example. It's uh, in a lot of the tints that are made for sunscreen that make them tinted. They actually block out some of the visible rays too. So which one of those has been called into question? So it's important to know that the physical ones, the mineral ones like titanium and zinc have not been called into question at all. And so if this is something that works well for you, you like the type of sunscreen that you're using, keep doing it, you have nothing to worry about. The only potential issue with these types of sunscreens is that they tend to leave a white residue. You tend to look very pasty and white because it's hard to make that zinc transparent without using very complex chemistry and very fancy delivery systems that'll actually leave it on without leaving that, that residue. So things like sheer zinc or transparent zinc, things like that are, are definitely the ways to go if you find you're shying away from using two fingertips, so two fingertips, uh, on your face to cover your face. If you're using less than that, you're not being protected and you'll need something different, okay? So that's really the end of the story. I hope you're staying safe out there. Make sure you're protecting yourself from the sun, whether it's physical blocker or a chemical blocker. Um, and don't just stick to that. Make sure you're putting on a hat, you're wearing glasses to protect your eyes from the sun that you're reapplying every couple of hours and that you're seeking shade and protective clothing as much as possible and that you're checking for the UV index. Lots of apps out there that'll tell you when it's really high and when to try and 
minimize outdoor activities. That's really going to be the bottom line and that's how you're going to be staying protected. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope to see you next time.